A little while ago, I bought this Masterbox Commonwealth Crew in 135 scale. This was to go with my Airfix M3 Stuart project, which I'm still currently working on. However, there's quite a few figures in here, and I'm not going to use all of them in that tank project. But I did take part in a group build over my Discord server titled War in the Desert, and I thought a couple of these figures would make a perfect little diorama. Hello everyone, I'm Matt, this is Model Minutes, and join me in this video as I show you how I built my little diorama featuring a camel rider and soldier. So let's not waste any time and get straight into this build. The parts on the sprue are really well molded and have very little flash. I'm going to cut all of the pieces that I need away from the sprues using my side snips. Once that was done, I went around the edges and sanded away any rough parts. I will also use my knife to get to those hard to reach places and remove the mold seams which are present on quite a few bits, like the legs and the neck of the camel. Tamiya Extra Thin Cement was then used to glue the various components together. I started with the two halves of the camel. There's no locating pins or anything for this, so it's sort of a best effort to try and get the two parts lined up. Once that was done, I applied some glue to the neck area and then added the head component. Following this, the top part where the seat for the rider goes was added and then the parts that drape down either side of the camel. The camel's tail could then be added. The little hand holds go into their holes on the top of the seat. And then I moved on to assembling the rider. The rider comes in multiple parts and does take a little care to put together. You can sort of position the figures a little bit differently so you could have the torso facing in one way if you wanted, but they are pretty much designed to be in one particular pose. So the variation isn't that massive. The pose that they are on the box of the kit is pretty much the pose you're going to get inside. Following that, I moved on to the soldier. Having cut and cleaned all of the parts for this guy, I glued together his legs, added his torso, his head, arms, and headdress. Humbrol poly cement will now be used to apply the smaller details to the figure. The needle applicator on this cement allows you to get really accurate placement of the glue. So here I am adding his various packs pouches and other bits of paraphernalia. Humbrol model filler was then applied to the area around the top of the camel rider's seat. Now I'm not entirely sure if this was my error in assembly and I've glued things in the wrong places, but there seemed to be quite a large gap. I wasn't happy with progressing with this gap in place, so I applied the model filler to this area using a paintbrush. A paintbrush that I'm not too fussed about and is pretty old and tatty anyway, so it'll probably get binned after this. Once that gap was hidden, I then sanded it smooth. Now it's time to do some spray painting. This very cheap matte black spray paint was used as the base color. I've seen online from other channels that something called a zenithal highlight is quite good for doing figures. So what you do is you start off with a black base layer all over your figures. And then next you want to use a white. So I'm going to use this white Hobbycraft acrylic spray paint, which I found actually works better on a base coat and it doesn't scratch off so easily. But all I'm going to do with this white paint is spray from above or the zenith. Just like the sun shines down on top of people and things, this white paint is going to give that same kind of effect. In the areas lower down, there should be dark, and in the areas higher up, it should be light. And this will become my base for the next layers of paint. For the rest of the painting, it was pretty much trial and error and a bit of guesswork. I didn't really go for any real set colours. So I started off with this tan earth, which was thinned down with Tamiya X20 acrylic thinner, and I painted this over the camel's skin. Because I've already done that zenithal highlight, I didn't want the paint to be too thick and hide it all. 
After that, I used this olive brown to paint the leather areas that go underneath the saddle. This rather attractive blue colour I thought would make a nice fabric colour for the seat. The benefit of this paint is that although it's airbrush ready, it's quite thin and it went on really well. Next up is this red and I used this to paint the details on the seat. I did a lot of this by freehand and it was a bit fiddly and I definitely need more practice doing this. After that, some gold paint was used to pick out the hand grips on the top and the various little details around the tassels. Next up, some pale sand paint was then dry brushed over the entire model to bring out some of those details and add a little bit of shade and contrast to the figure. And here it is, for a first go at ever doing, you know, a real animal, this doesn't look too bad in my opinion. So moving on, Tan Earth was then applied to the face and hands of the Camel Rider. I'm using this Humbrol 247, which is a light blue, again thinned down and then applied to his tunic. Again, very light coats of paint to make sure I don't hide that zenith or highlight. After that, I used some white paint on his headdress. And then after picking out some of the other details with some of the colours previously used, I used pale sand, again dry brushed all over the figure to help bring out some of those details. And yeah, he's not looking too bad either. So let's move on to the last figure, which I think was the slightly hardest one, so that's why I left him to last. The Soldier. So I started off with Tan Earth again on his flesh. And then moved on to this Vallejo English uniform, which I had in my painting supplies. This should make a good approximation of the World War II sort of khaki colour that Commonwealth troops wore during that period. When that was done, I mixed some khaki with some white, and I'm going to apply this to his various bits of webbing, having first thinned it down. The webbing and straps and pouches should be a slightly different colour to the rest of the uniform according to the painting instructions on the box. When that was done, some Humbrol 62, which is a leather colour, was used on his boots. And then after that, I painted his headdress white. Again, a dry brush of pale sand was used to bring out some of those raised details. And then I added his rifle, which I have previously painted with a sort of woody brown and some gun metal. The strap is made out of a piece of wire, which I shaped to the sort of right shape. It's not perfect. It's not as tight as I would like it. Perhaps some masking tape or something like that would be suitable in the future. But I think for now, this would do as my first go. And with that, he is now ready to be added to the little diorama. So for this diorama, I'm going to use one of my little display bases, which I have designed personally, and it was 3D printed. I'll drop a link in the description of the video to where you can download this completely for free, if you'd like to have some for yourself. The camel was then glued onto the display base, along with the soldier in a sort of realistic pose. This was then followed by adding the rider to the camel. You'll notice he's got a little stick in his hand and that was simply a piece of stretched sprue. I glued on some rocks which I found in the garden and then applied a good coating of PVA glue to the entire base. I then sprinkled on some sand which I got from the beach. I have actually baked the sand in the oven at over 200 degrees Celsius just to make sure that I'd sanitized it. After this some sticks from the garden were added and then some grass tufts, which are Woodland Scenics products. But before this is completely finished, a little bit of dry brushing with some pale sand over the top, just to bring out some more of those raised details. And with that, my diorama is now complete. Well, I'm not going to lie, I'm actually really happy with the way that this has turned out, especially given the fact that I don't normally do figures and probably the biggest figures I've ever really done are 148 scale pilots. So for me, this has been a massive learning curve and the fact that it looks to my eye to be pretty good is a massive bonus. 
I added a few little extras such as the lead on the camel's harness which is simply a bit of wire and that stick in the rider's hand which is just a bit of stretch sprue but generally everything that is on the model is a feature of the kit apart from naturally the display base and the elements there. The assembly of the model was fairly easy but I feel like I made a mistake with the top of the chair on the camel. I feel like perhaps I glued the side pieces in the wrong place because that gap that was there just seemed a bit too large to be an error so I feel like that's probably my fault but at least I managed to fill it in and it doesn't look noticeable in the finished model. I'm really happy with the zenithal highlight technique that I used on this one and the very thin layers of paint helped to bring out those lovely details in the model kit moulding. All in, this build took about 8 hours to complete. And I thoroughly enjoyed it, seeing as it was outside of my comfort zone. I'll definitely look at doing some more little diorama type pieces in the future. But anyways, let me know down in the comments what you thought of my build. I'd also be interested in hearing any of the techniques I could have used to improve my work. Massive shout out to my patrons and channel members for the extra support they give the channel. Massive thanks to these guys on screen. To find out how you can get involved, take a look at the links in the description. Whilst you're down in the description box, don't forget that you can find a link to the free STL file for the display base I've designed, if you'd like one. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subbing to the channel with notifications on will help ensure that you never miss a modelling upload. Finally, all that's left to say is a massive thank you to you for watching this one and I'll see you on the workbench again next time.